Hi guys, um, we've got a empirical formula question here um, that says we've got quantitative analysis of an organic compound shown that it contained only carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. A quantitative study of the same compound was performed in which that much of the sample was burnt in excess oxygen to produce that much water, that much CO2 collected at these temperatures and pressures. Determine the empirical formula for the compound. All right. So the, what I like to do to start these problems out is I like to just break it down and we're going to work through, we've got carbon, we've got hydrogen, and we've got oxygen. So what we're going to do first is we'll make a little table. Now hopefully this works. Boom. Sweet. All right. So what we've got here is we've got that much water being produced. So the water, we calculate the number of moles of hydrogen gas from the water. So let's just write down, we've got 0 0.416 grams of H2O. Cool. Now we've also got 707 700.7 .7 mils of carbon dioxide at that temperature and pressure. So we've got 0 0.7007 litres of CO2. And that's how we're going to calculate what carbon content we've got. Now once we've calculated the masses of both carbon and hydrogen that are in this compound, we're going to subtract them from uh, this value to get the number of moles of oxygen. So let's go about finding the number of moles of carbon first. So we know that the number of moles of carbon is going to be equal to the number of moles of CO2. That's because in one mole of CO2 there's one mole of carbon. That's pretty self-explanatory, hopefully. So the formula that we're going to use for calculating the number of moles of CO2 is this one. PV equals NRT. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to rearrange that so it's in terms of number of moles. So this is then going to look like the number of moles is equal to PV divided by R T. Cool. So go back to the same color. So what we do is the number of moles of CO2 is going to be equal to the pressure, 102.8 times the volume in liters, 0 0.7. 0.7007 divided by the international gas constant 8.315 times the temperature and this is supposed to be in Kelvin so this is going to be 373 Kelvin cool so we're going to times it by 373 and Let's just extend this line a bit further. It's a bit of a botch job, but oh well. So, we plug all that into our calculator, and we get 2.3218 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. Cool. So that's also going to be our number of moles of carbon. So then what we're going to do is we're going to work out what the mass of carbon we have because we need the masses so we can take it away from the original amount to find oxygen in the end. So the mass of carbon is just going to be equal to the number of moles times the molar mass of carbon. So it's going to be 12.01 
times 2.3218 times 10 to the negative 2. And that, we find, is equal to 0 0.27885. Cool. Grams. Now, let's go straight over to our hydrogen. Now, the formula that we're going to use to work out the number of moles here is just our basic number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass, which is equal to 0 0.416 divided by the molar mass of water. So it's 16 plus 2 times 1.008 or 18.016. After you've done a few of these, you'll start to realize, like, you'll start to remember the molecular weights of the basic ones like carbon dioxide and water and things like that. I don't know why I've kept doing this in red, but I will. And from there, you get 2, 2.3091. times 10 to the negative 2 moles and that's this is of H 2 O okay so let's go back to our proper color so then we have to do our molar ratio so we looking for the number of moles of hydrogen actually not water is equal to because there are two hydrogens per water molecule 2 times the number of moles of water. So that's going to be equal to 2 times this, or 4.6181. 4.6181 times 10 to the negative 2, and that's moles. Sorry about my disgusting handwriting. Okay, so then we have to work out the mass of the hydrogen. And that's just equal to the number of moles of hydrogen times the molar mass. So it's going to be 4.6181 times 1.008. And we get 4.655 times 10 to the negative 2 grams. Okay, so that's the carbon done, the hydrogen done. Now let's get stuck into the oxygen. So the mass of O2 in this molecule, or mass of oxygen, sorry, not O2, silly mistake, is equal to the mass of the total molecule, so 0 0.5096, subtract the mass of oxygen, subtract the mass of hydrogen. And what we get, so it's going to be 0 0.5096, subtract 4.655 times 10 to the negative 2, subtract 0 0.27885. And we get 0 0.18423. 0 0.18423. 4, 2, 3 grams. So from there, we can work out the number of moles of oxygen. Let me just be consistent and write the formulas of oxygen is going to be equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, which is equal to 0 0.18423 to 3 divided by the molar mass which is 16 and that equals 1.1514 1.1514 times 10 to the negative 2 mole cool so now we've got all the number of moles of each of them we've got the number of moles of carbon the number of moles of hydrogen the number of moles of oxygen what we then do 
is we have to work out what the ratios of each of them are. So down the bottom here, I'm going to write down each of the number of moles. So for carbon, we have the number of moles is 2.3218, 2.3218. Now, because they're all 10 to the negative 2, I'm just going to leave that out because it's not important. The hydrogen is 4.6181. Now, if these were all different, if this was 10 to the negative 3, we'd have to put all of the num we'd have to put all of the scientific notations in. But because they're all the same, it doesn't matter. They're all the same order of magnitude. And this one is 1.1 five one four cool so then what you do to work out the ratios you pick you find the smallest number which is in this case the one that belongs to the oxygen and you divide each of the molar amounts the mole amounts by that number so what we have here is we have so basically what this does is it tells us in like molar ratios how many multiples of the amount of oxygen do we have of the amount of hydrogen? How many multiples of the amount of oxygen do we have of the amount moles of carbon? So you can see here that that one there would equal 2, that one there would equal 4, and that one there obviously because it's dividing by itself is equal to 1. So you can see from this we can write therefore the empirical formula is equal to C2H4O. And that is our solution. So basically, when you're doing this, the reason I set it out in this table is so you can work, you don't miss any steps. You can work through one column, then you go to the next column, work through the next column, go to the next column. It's just an easier way to set it out for me, to be honest. And then when you're doing the ratios, you can do them under each of the columns. It just makes it look a lot nicer. So first of all, you calculate the number of moles of each of the um, atoms that you're given. So in this case, we had carbon and hydrogen. You then, what we did is we found out the weights of those and then took them away from the total weight to find the number of moles of oxygen. Once we've got each of our number of moles, we then... Um, find the ratios by dividing it by the smallest number of mole amount. Now, in this one here, a lot of people will make the mistake of not including this step here. This step here is very important because if we don't do this, we're going to be out by the number of moles of hydrogen because we need to make sure that our molar ratios inside each of the molecules is okay. So here, this um, water gives us two moles of hydrogen. So as long as we make sure not to stuff or kook that one up, we should be okay. So I hope this video helped, and I'll uh, see you again next time.